Ooh, I'm just making myself extra cozy because I, for some reason, I found it really nerve wracking to speak to a microphone, which is essentially just speaking to myself. And I talk to myself constantly. So I'm wondering why I'm finding it so scary. Now, as you can probably tell by just looking at what you've seen so far, I, and I guess clicking on the thumbnail, I think you might have gathered that this is a draw with me. Today we're drawing Brontosaurus. With the help of my good friend, Broden the Brontosaurus, we're drawing Broden in lots of different poses. And as you can see, I've already started off with three. I did these three before Christmas last year. Or maybe just after, because that's when I got the sketchbook. The sketchbook, that, that's something I should probably address. Why do I have such a long sketchbook? Well, the first shot you would have seen is a full length dinosaur. And to draw the middle browsing sauropods that I wanted to draw, I thought, hey, I wonder if there's anywhere that makes panoramic kind of sketchbooks. And there is. I got it from, well I didn't get it from Sea White of Brighton, but it is a Sea White of Brighton book. I was under the impression, I don't know why, but I was under the impression that it was the length of an A3, but not the height of an A3. I was quite wrong. It's, <laughs> it's the length and height of an A3 times two. And then when you open it out, times four. When I lie down next to it, fully opened out, the sketchbook, not me. We are like the same length. I wanted to do something a bit ridiculous, like, I don't know, make the Bayo Tapestry with dinosaurs. But I thought, let's start basic and we'll just start with some poses. I'm, I get, mm, should I say? I'm currently, I'm trying to develop ideas for a book and I've got a good amount of ideas so far but again the question is can I pull it off whilst also being in the mind that I need to simplify the shapes and I've realized it's quite hard to explain when you're in the moment because you don't really think about it but what I've learned from making observational drawings and then taking them a step further is that you kind of find your style through simplifying and altering certain parts of what you're drawing. It's something for another video, but throughout uni I would often get picked up on having a style when I myself was not really sure what my style was. Yeah, I was being told I had one. <laughs> and now it looks nothing like what I was doing in uni. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe at some point I'll do a little video on the evolution of my style. I might just do it on my old sketchbooks because I've got a few from sort of 2017 to about 2019 that I think would be quite interesting to look at.
hey it's me in person i've sat down to answer a few more questions that i missed out on last time so i'm gonna do that right now so what inspires your style changes i for some reason changed from black and white to full color which i explained in the last video but i'm not sure what came over me but i realized hey i've got all these pencils let's use them and I was desperate for a change after uni, so my style kind of evolved quite naturally. <laughs> Favourite beer is this lovely Japanese one. Do you have a favourite spread in your upcoming book? I sure do. I mean, I have a few. I have a few favourite spreads, um, so I will put them up here. Well, I'm going to put one up here and maybe a third one So thank you for watching this and see you in the next one I guess. Bye bye now.